Well, how's it going, everybody? It's your old pal, the Credit Crusader, coming at you with more information about CPNs. <laughs> you guys love that CPN shit. Can't get enough of it. Well, that's a good thing because I know a ton about them and I'm more than happy to share the info with you guys. Before I start this video, I'd like to give a shout out to Kid Flash. This is the uh, progress he's made on my, uh, the picture that he's done, a pen and ink. Man, looking good, buddy, looking good. Also, I'd like to give you guys a heads up on what the Crusader has in store for this Halloween. Oh my God. I just gotta let you guys know that I am like one of the biggest fans of Halloween. I love Halloween. And I plan on having an extreme ex Halloween extravaganza from like, I wanna say mid-September to, till Halloween, October on this channel. It's gonna be nuts. There's gonna be effects. There's gonna be like celebrities. It's gonna be insane. I just hope you guys are gonna be ready for it. And I hope you guys like Halloween as much as I do because it's a coming. I know we're getting screwed by COVID-19 and chances are, we're, you know, we're not gonna be able to do anything for this Halloween, but have no fear. If you, you guys will definitely get a nice, you know, heaping helping of Halloween goodness on this channel in the coming months, just so you guys know. I'm also gonna take this time to address um, an email that I got today regarding Mike and Wholesale Trade Lines with the credit game. I got this, you know, email with this in it and, um, the person who emailed me wanted to know what I, how I felt about it or you know, what I thought, you know, if he's scamming people or what have you. And I'll, I'll give you my two cents. Um, uh, from looking at this, it, it, it seems to be that you know, the credit uh, education arena is not really as profitable as trade lines. Uh, and I can see why. I mean, I, I can see it being a hell of a lot harder to sell an education package versus you know, trade lines, which is more of an instant fix. Not only that, Trade lines command a higher dollar value. I mean, think about it. Some trade lines are $1,000. Uh, education package, I mean, how much can you really charge for that where people are going to buy it? I mean, even though you can you know, sell a bunch of them, that's still a harder sell. I mean, trade lines, it's almost like, you know, it's like drugs. I mean, people are banging on the door, you know, do you got them, do you got them? Whereas like an education package, it's kind of like, you know, you got to sell them on it. Why do you need this? How is this really going to help you? So I can see it being a lot harder to sell an education package. So, you know, I know Mike has definitely got a lot of experience in uh, trade lines and in credit repair and things like that. So I think, you know, this, I mean, I don't know for sure, but what I believe is, is that, you know, they probably have, you know, they still selling trade lines, just not under, you know, the credit game. They're just doing it under another, like they'll say it's the preferred vendors, but it's probably, the preferred vendors are probably them, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, they probably started up a company and they, you know, and, and I mean, I guess, you know, it's like, is that wrong to do? I don't know. I mean, if, as long as they make good on the trade lines, as long as they post and they, you know, do what they say they're going to do, then I mean, I guess it's not that bad. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that it's going to be tough just, you know, because of what happened for them to, you know, get their credibility and clout back as far as that, you know, that stuff is concerned, you know, trade lines, posting, what have you. I mean, but then again, it's like they did refund a lot of people. So it's like, I mean, who, I guess the jury's out on what's really going to happen with this. So, I mean, that's my two cents. That's, you know, what I feel is going on. And hey, uh, you know, you guys know what uh, you guys that were, were around, you know, when that all went down, you guys remember. So, you know, it's up to you guys to make the decision whether or not you want to do business with them. So with that being said, on to the video. All right. CPNs, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, assume most of you guys know what a CPN is. It's pretty much a alternate credit profile that you can use to source credit and other things like bank accounts. Um, you can get apartments with them, get, you know, get past the background check with apartments, credit check with apartments and what have you. But there are some things that um, I've seen and learned that I may uh, wanna share with you guys. Um, Basically, when someone makes a CPN, you got two options. Now, there, there's been, you know, most of them are randomized numbers, but some, of, some people will, I guess, they'll say they have a age appropriate number, which is a number that hasn't been used. It was a number that I guess was made, but was never assigned to anybody. Those are kind of the age appropriate numbers. I mean, I haven't, you know, seen a lot of good, you know, things happen with them. I mean, generally speaking, I've seen some 
work great, but then others, you know, they just, you can't get approved for anything. There seems to be something wrong with them. So, you know, when someone says that they can get you an age appropriate number, I'd be kind of weary. Um, number two, with, as far as randomized numbers are concerned, um, I've seen them do pretty well. It's definitely a slow process. Uh, the days of you, someone getting a CPN, and this is shit that people used to do back in the day. You could get a CPN, add authorized user trade lines to it, the next month after it posted, you could get like $50,000 in credit. Boom, right, right out the door. I mean, it was, it was nuts, it was insane. Those days are over. I mean, the banks have wisened up. And there's something else I wanna tell you guys about authorized user trade lines. Authorized user trade lines are a great way to boost your score, but if you don't have anything on there, they're really not gonna do much. I mean, if you add like five authorized user trade lines, I'm talking about bomb diggity, like 20 year plus, and then you try to get something with no primaries, you're, you're not gonna get approved for much because you have no primaries and the banks can see that. Authorized user trade lines work the best when there are other primary accounts in the file. So you wanna mix that shit in, that's when they work. If you just try to do authorized users alone, it's really not gonna work, work out the way you think it is. Sorry, but it's just, you know, the bank's got wise. What do you want me to say? Sorry, not sorry. Um, but, you know, there's definitely, you know, a process and CPNs can still be built, but it's just, it takes time. I mean, you're gonna have to go, I would start out getting a small um, authorized user trade line just to get it a score. And then I would start going for the, um, you know, like the credit builder accounts, um, secured credit cards, uh, even like the, even like those primaries that are like you know my jewelers and whatnot. I mean, you can go that route if you'd like. I've heard my jewelers is uh, been uh, you know not accepting CPNs that much anymore. So you know it's again you got to jiggle the locks. And here's another thing: it's like in this industry, shit is changing constantly. Shit that worked like a month ago doesn't necessarily work today. It's like it's constantly changing. So it's like, you've constantly gotta be trying new shit. So some advice I could give, if you're trying to build a CPN, get more than one. Get like, you know, two or three. Because then you can experiment. Okay, well it worked on this, all right, well then you'll know, versus just going shot in the dark. Because once you run up those inquiries, I mean, the CPN is gonna be kind of shot. I mean, yes, you can get them removed, but then that's a hassle and they can put a lock on your, uh, you know, credit accounts and then it's like, you know, more headaches and what have you. So I would always recommend getting more than one. Get more than one so you can experiment, try shit out, see if things work, see how it works. That way you can get better at building these things because a lot of it's trial and error. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's just getting in there, seeing what works. Um, one thing I can say is, is that if you get a CPN and use your real name and a different address, one thing you can do is on your actual credit profile, lock that shit up. Lock your uh, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, SageStream, and um, LexisNexis. Lock all that shit up. That way, if, you know, if there ever you know, comes a problem and it wants to merge, it's, you know, it, it may help out. I've seen that work. So it's like, you know, make sure that if you're gonna be using your, you know, you're totally gonna be uh, using the CPN, lock your real shit up that way, because you don't want that shit merging. I've also seen if you go that route, sometimes public records will actually merge with the CPN. If that happens, oh my God, that's what you want because basically the CPN will have a presence online for years and years and years instead of looking like it's brand spanking new and you're you know, 35 years old. It's like, that's, that's another thing. It's like when people are making these things, you gotta make them look, you know, make it look believable. I mean, it's like the banks definitely have things in place to try to sniff this shit out. I mean, they're, they're looking for it. They're going to try to, they're, they're, they're trying to freaking, you know, stop this. And one of the ways they do it is try to see patterns in what other people are doing. So you've got to look, you've got to look legitimate. You got to, that's why building it slow is so important. You've got to look, make it look real. Don't just add a bunch of trade lines and try to apply for a bunch of stuff. You know, get it and then just like, let it sit back and chill. Get the little baby shit. Let it build up slowly. That's your best bet because if someone is you know, new to credit, that's what they're gonna do. They're not gonna just know to add trade lines and then boom, you know, get a bunch of stuff. So that's you know, some advice I can give you. It's like, when you look at that credit profile, you gotta look at it and think to yourself, all right, does this look like a CPN or does it look like a real credit profile? That's, I mean, like, look, at, look at it, be like, all right, you got some authorized users, you got some, uh, you know, uh, some secured credit cards, paid, Paid in full accounts, I think, look, make a uh, credit profile look more authentic. 
even if the account is closed, or closed accounts. Even if the account's on there, closed, paid in full. Because think about it, what CPN is gonna close an account that he could have run up? I mean, they're not a lot of, you know, they're not gonna do that. So it's like you gotta do shit that makes it look more legitimate that will help you because I know a lot of the banks, they're really cracking down. I mean, Chase is now um, asking for documentation just to add someone as an authorized user if they smell that uh, it may be a CPN. Citibank was already doing that, now Chase is implementing it too. So it's like, I mean, that may have something to do with the, uh, what is it, the software that the Social Security Administration was gonna roll out to be able to validate the uh, CPNs, whether or not the socials are, uh, you know, connected to the name and the birth date so it may have something to do with that i don't know but that is definitely i'm seeing that happen so i mean so i mean a lot of people are, are probably questioning or asking okay well if the cpn game goes to shit well what what's next and i'm thinking i mean it's definitely gonna the industry will definitely take a hit if cpns you know go bye-bye because i mean i'm gonna say 40 to 50 percent of the people who get trade lines are getting them for a cpn so it's like, if that happens, will the industry be affected? Yes, it will. Um, I think that um, CPNs still may be able to be used for uh, getting an apartment. I think that may be something that uh, you know, may exist longer than actually being able to get credit cards and cars and things like that. But um, you know, as far as the future is concerned, my guess would be you know, pr getting primary accounts is something that you know, this industry is going, to, is going to go more towards and, you know, being able to, you know, like starting up a business that um, has like a secured card or a secured loan or just, just being able to report to the credit bureaus, your rent reporters or what have you. Just if you have a business that has that ability, you can make money because people are going to want those primaries. They're just, you know, they're going to want them. And I mean, backdated primaries, I mean, that's like, that's the golden ticket right there. So um, I think that the industry will go in that direction. It's just, you gotta think, it's a lot harder to, um, to be able to you know, have those abilities and have access to be able to report to the credit bureaus. So I think that um, the price of the uh, primaries will definitely be very high, uh, un unless you know, there's some way that you know, your everyday guy can get in there and do it. But um, I think that you know, as far as the future is concerned, I think it's probably gonna go into that direction. Maybe not, things may stay like this for you know, a hot minute. I mean, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just trying to speculate. But um, as far as CPNs are concerned, it's like, yes, they, they, the banks are cracking down, they're getting harder to build up, but they still work you know, up until now. Um, you can still get stuff. Your, I mean, your best bet is you know, to try to go after, you know, uh, banks like, I want to say, Comenity, Synchrony, Citibank, Discover, kind of, just don't get too high of a limit, and, um, and see what happens there. If you have a, a CPN that has an ID, like it's actually your real name and you can present an ID, then I, uh, you can probably try to go for Chase and Capital One. Now, why am I not saying Capital One over here? Because Capital One is notorious for, they'll open you up an account, but then they want you to send in documentation and all this shit, like you'll get the card and then it'll be locked up and they'll want you to send in documentation before they'll open it. So uh, yes, it'll report as a primary, but you won't be able to use it. So it's like, eh, I mean, do you really want to go through that? And I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, there are some places where you can get an ID <laughs> for the fake name. There's places you can go to get that. I mean, they are on the internet, they do exist. I don't know if I'm gonna go in, you know, into where to get them in this video, maybe later, I don't know. I mean, now we're getting real sketchy. I'm trying to get monetized and it's like, I don't know if I wanna go too far down the dark path, but I'll do what I can for you guys. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's pretty much the skinny on some of the things that I know about CPNs that I've been noticing that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, you know, best, you know, so the takeaway is if you're gonna do this, try to get more than one so you can, you know, experiment, trial and error. Also, I mean, another thing you can use a CPN for that a lot of people don't, you know, think or realize is you could use a CPN to see what, um, what a particular bank or a lender is, you know, where they're going to pull the hard inquiry from. Because you could have a CPN, you know, run the experiment on that, be like, be like all right, you know, you want to see where, you know, this card is going to pull from the hard, you know, where they're going to do the hard inquiry. So you go apply with the CPN, see where they pull, and then now you know. So, I mean, there, that's something you could do with them right there that, you know, that's probably on the less, less uh, sketchy side of things, if you know what I mean. 
Um, are, are CPNs illegal? I mean, pff, shit. I mean, it's like such, it's gray area. I'm sure there are definitely aspects of CPNs that are illegal. And if you get caught with them, you could get in trouble. So definitely use at your own risk. I would not recommend, you know, walking into, you know, wherever and say, oh yeah, this is my CPN number. I would keep it on the hush hush, if you know what I mean. But hey, you know, we're all big boys and girls. So, you know, the decisions we make are, you know, ours and ours alone. Um, I'm not telling you guys to do anything. I'm just telling you guys the information that I know. And uh, with that, you guys can make the decision that you want to make. I'm just here to help. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Crusader out.